cashier at a grocery store called Acme. Um, and I was laid off right before I was graduated. So I was collecting unemployment while I was in rehab. And then when I got my computer back five months later, while still in rehab, I had like four or $500 saved. So I bought the free, like the cheapest version of Ableton and a bunch of, uh, vengeance samples and massive. And then I just had nothing to do except for go to AA meetings all day, every day and connect and talk to kids on the internet. So I started making music a little bit more seriously. I had experimented with like reason in high school and like logic in high school and, and Ableton, but gave up. But I had so much time that I was like, I might as well fucking do it. Cause this was like around the peak of my, like being new to electronic music obsession. Like I'd been listening to electronic music for a few years, but my first show ever was Rusko. And you guys all fucking know that feeling of after your first show, like the first one that truly blew your mind. Like that's some, there's something mystical to it. Like there's something truly internally, like it just hits the spot of like whimsy. Hey, Alex, love you. Um, so I was still in that like early to EDM fan chasing that feeling kind of thing. Uh, yeah, it's life changing. So I was still like, and I just was sent to rehab right after my first one. So I couldn't, I went to one and then couldn't go to another one for like a good six months. So I was like so pent up. I had my fucking dead mouse CDs burnt on my Walkman player, all that shit. Um, cause we couldn't have phones in rehab. We could only have a Walkman player. Um, so yeah, I was so obsessed with it because I couldn't go to him that I'd been listening to all this shit. And I was like, I want to make it. I want to make stuff. So I had some experience. So when I got my computer back, bought Ableton, bought Massive, and then started producing. And then I moved back home. After that, produced for a little bit, sucked at it. Got in trouble for smoking weed again. And then I was sent out to live in Scranton. Um, Because my parents thought, if you're going to smoke weed, you're going to 100% fail out of college, for sure. So you can't smoke weed if you're going to college. And then I was lying about smoking weed again. So they're like, we don't trust you to send you to college. The only way we'll trust you to send you to college, which we can afford, you can't. I wanted to go. Um, it was if we send you to rehab, a halfway house. So I went to live in this halfway house for five months. That's when I started taking production way more seriously. Started DJing a little bit with a little shitty controller. Um, and then when I got out of the halfway house, and moved into my first apartment, in an uh, apartment complex of just AA people, going to AA meetings three times a day, Sheets is not better than Wawa. Fuck out of here with that shit. Sheets has better burgers and better fried food, but Wawa has better deli meats any day of the week, bro. Um, but yeah, I lived in Scranton. It was horrible. It was awful. Um, I was surrounded by pro-lifers who didn't believe in evolution. Uh, I was super depressed and way more overweight, um, and it completely hated my life for about four years. Um, I had like two actual friends there. And then a bunch of other people in AA that just gave me shit constantly for being an, an individual. Um, and I hated it. Um, so I was like, fuck this. I'm going to do some cool shit instead. Uh, and I got on the internet and I just talked to, whoa, my Apple Watch is doing crazy shit right now. Okay. Um, I got on the internet and I just started making friends with other dubstep producers who also had no friends and hated their lives. Um, that community of people later kind of became rhythm and like tear out and the underground dubstep scene. And that's kind of where this current generation of dubstep kids are all coming from. We all met each other like six years ago on the internet, um, from nothing. So yeah, uh, after going to Scranton, I, 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 when I got out of that halfway house, I went to school in Scranton like two and a half years, slowly built up a following, changed my name to Subtronics, released on Prime Audio, um, had like some not real managers, met a handful of people, met Trollface who introduced me to some people, um, no, this was way before Particle, or this might have been around Particle Meme Weapon time, um, like, this was, like, Child's Play, like, when I made that tune Child's Play, or Diabolical, um, then I went out to my first Rhythm show in New York City, Basement Saturdays, where Trollface was headlining, that was when everything changed for sure, and then I was like, alright, so this is a scene that I can get into for sure, um, and then, yeah, I moved back to Philly, and that's when I started, like, playing shows and actually getting some traction, and, you know, eventually had to drop out of Temple University to continue to playing shows, like, two or three years after that. And then two or three years after dropping out, shit started really picking up, started playing festivals. And I dropped out of Temple, I'd say, four or five years ago. And that's my entire life story. I hope you guys enjoyed it.
from 17 to 27. That's what I've done with my 10 years. It's crazy there's so many people in here now. Not like literally, but like, I had no following for so long, man. Really. Like, I really, really did. I just wanted to professionally turn knobs. It's all I wanted. It just takes a really long time. That's it. Scream said it best. Anything you want to do, you can do it. It just takes 10 years. You get to the five-year mark, you're like, what the fuck? Nah, dude, that's when everyone quits. Another five. Oh, I bet it smells amazing. It does. You can smell it? Yeah. So when you got a coffee mask and it smells just like coffee? It's not. Oh, my God. I know. It's literally coffee beans. It's incredible. <laughs> Another one of the crazy things about um, growth is that it never fe it's so slow it doesn't even feel like it until you like turn around you're like oh well things have changed girls to say I'm really, I'm really high skateboarding is the same way I do I think there's a little bit in there I like it I relate to that because what was the 10 year saga before age 17 not rehab or weed or dubstep, but it was skateboarding. Oh no. Skateboarding and playing the drums. Thank you. It was my entire life. Ages 7 to 17. All I cared about was being a professional skateboarder or being a professional drummer. And I realized when I was too scared to jump down handrails that I was probably going to be a professional drummer. And then I realized you can make the whole song on the computer. And I was like, what? Yes. CKY for the win. Why CKY for the win? Because I'm from Philadelphia. The suburbs of Philadelphia. You know what else is a suburb of Philadelphia? Westchester. You know who's from Westchester? Bam Margera. I used to see him at the skate parks all the time. Same with Chris Cole. There's a lot of really incredible skateboarders hailing from Philadelphia. You shot where? Another one? Master. I'm not good at skateboarding anymore. The most I can do is maybe a tray flip. I went to a house party at Bam's house, like, recently. And, crazier than that, the first time I ever got on a plane to go play a dubstep show, like, four years ago, Bam Margera was sitting next to me. I didn't even realize it until we were landing in Iceland. I was playing a show in Paris. It was like my first time ever getting on a plane for dubstep. I was terrible. Yeah, my first show ever. On a, for like, I took a plane. I had a bunch of other shows that I drove to. In like New York, Philly, West Virginia. Uh, and Montreal, which I took the train and the bus. But my first show that like required a plane was Paris. And I was terrified. Oh my god, I had no idea what I was doing. It was so scary and overwhelming. I've never traveled like that before at all. When I was just going by myself to Europe, I was like, this is the most intimidating shit ever. I feel like, I think I remember, like, crying when I got there, like, just being so overwhelmed and intimidated. And now it's like I can go to Paris on a Tuesday, like, literally whatever. <laughs> I mean, it is a lot of work to get there, but... <laughs> no, it's the best example is like the last Australia. I was laughing at that. Oh. I was laughing at this video of a dog, and the caption is me trying to hold in a cough because I've already coughed twice, and it's like, <laughs> but like I relate to that so much. Sorry, Jesse. It's, the no, I love it. Pat Sergino's. I'm going to say this for the 30th time. They're both garbage. Throw them in the trash. It's tourist trap bullshit. What is? 
Pass him, Geno's. Del Rossi's. Del Rossi's is tight. Um, De Los Andros is tight. Phillips is great. Can be a little bit hit or miss. So long. We haven't because we haven't had cheese in so long. Well, I get them without cheese. That's got to be so dry. No, you, that's why you dip it in the marinara sauce. It's so good. I don't know. De Los Andros is lit. Phillips is lit. Can be a little bit hit or miss, but Phillips is lit. I do live in Philly. Um... I like Jim's, although Jim's is kind of a tourist trap. Pat's Roast Pork. My man knows. Um, Pat's Roast Pork, top five, for sure. Um, that's a lesser known one. And I like Ishka Bibbles. Ishka what? Bibbles. What, you don't like Ishka Bibbles? What is, what is an Ishka Bibble? Ishka Bibbles not terrible. Um, no, I stopped eating cheese because of IBS pain, yeah. Um, Phillips has the best mozzarella sticks. But Pat's and Gino's, hot garbage water. But my favorite places are probably Jim's, Phillips, or Delisandro's. I am a Flyers fan. Um, I don't follow it anymore, really. But out of any of the sports teams I did follow as a child, um, I cared about hockey the most. Because, I don't know why, but all other sports seem really slow-paced, and I'm like a very ADHD person, so I need a lot to be going on. And hockey's like, the whole time you're watching it, it's like so intense, it's very fast-paced. Where like baseball is like, they did the thing. All right, wait five minutes. They'll do another thing soon. Or, like, football's even kind of like... They do a thing every 15 seconds for five seconds. But hockey's like, bam, 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 bam. So I can watch hockey for sure. I am a Flyers fan. I stopped following it, but, like, back when Lindros got, like, seven concussions against the Devils in that one playoff series in, like, 2004, whenever it was, I was, I was sitting by the TV for that shit for sure. <clears throat> And I hated New Jersey for that. Even though they're right across the river. I'm eating a Wawa tuna hoagie. This is the last time I'll be able to eat one for a while. I'm going on tour for three months. We can get them in Florida. We can get them on the New York stops. Oh, sure. New York as well. I could bless you. New York doesn't have Wawa. New York doesn't have Wawa? No. It's just New Jersey, Philly, and PA, and Delaware. Yeah. Well, when we play the Fillmore, we're going to have to order Wawa for sure. I'm a Jew, it's tuna fish. Most people think it's gross. What's ironic is I'm a crazy picky eater, so I think most food is gross, but I love tuna fish. I like tuna fish and sushi, but I don't like ketchup. Or like... Ketchup. Ketchup. I don't like anything. I'm like annoyingly picky. Florida does have Wawa. Virginia's got Wawa, I forgot. Yes, you do. DC's got Wawa. Yeah, DC's got Wawa. Wawa is truly like an inside joke of the East Coast. Of like, we know we have a superior store. Sonia, they're arguing over how to pronounce ketchup. It's okay. It is. Sheets is fire too. I do like sheets. Ketchup. <laughs> Your face smells good. Thank you. Do they agree? They can't smell your face. No, I meant with the, the pronouncing it ketchup and not ketchup. Because ketchup is like catching up. That's my Philadelphia accent coming through. You realize that, right? Jesse calls guacamole guacamole. Because of a Futurama and episode. And he thought that was correct. Okay, <laughs> I didn't think it was correct. 
ever since I saw the Futurama episode where Zap Brannigan pronounces it guacamole, I didn't know if it was like him just saying it weird or if the joke was that he was mispronouncing it. So my entire life I've been unsure if it's been guacamole or guacamole. Guacamole. I've always just kind of been unsure. I know you would know for sure. So I've just been calling it. I like I switch every time because I'm not sure. I kind of just read. I'll say one and read the room and be like, so what do you guys think? Be like, we think you just said guacamole wrong, you idiot. So, yeah. Hello. <laughs> All right. I'm going to probably practice my set. I'm so worried that I'm getting sick. I don't think I am, but my sinuses feel strange. I should stop smoking for the day b- time being. I can't believe we kept this many people in here this whole time. It's water. It's because they love you. It's water. No, it's water. Can I get a glass of water? Yeah, like water. You never say that. Can I get some, can I get some water? I'm like in between water. I'll catch myself. Like, I'll be like, yo, can I borrow your phone? Or like, do you want to go home? That's you, a said fr- that, you sound like a valley girl. You want to go home? Do you want to go home? No, it's like, do you want to go home? You sound, like a, a phone. you sound like a drunk valley girl. What is the Philadelphian accent? Kind of like New Jersey, right? Florida. <laughs> it's hard not to do it in a British accent. What? <coughs> 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 Someone said, I'm from the valley. I grew up in the valley. Tarzana. I got this extra tuna hoagie just in case I'm still hungry. Plot twist. I'm still kind of hungry. I can't say goodbye to Wawa. That's so much pepper. The fuck? If anyone knows this reference, 10 points. That one was too spicy for the pepper. Pepper's not spicy. First person to tell me what TV show that's from in the chat, um, I'll dedicate my next bong rip to you. Looks like things are getting too spicy for the pepper. Yo! Clay Howard Smith, sir, my mom's busy, my mom buys my glass was a close second, but yes, for you. (laughs) Okie dokie. I'm going to stop procrastinating now, and I'm going to go actually practice my set. (coughs) (coughs) Hopefully it all works out. I don't have much time to change or fix anything, because I leave tomorrow morning. All right. Cheers, everybody. Thank you for watching. Thank you for coming out and buying tickets on the tour when it's coming up super soon. Thank you for listening to Volume 5. I worked really hard on it, and I can't believe it's out. Um, and thank you for watching my live stream and being super nice and cool, and I appreciate you all. Have a good night.